Okay, good afternoon. Welcome to Ultimate Project 21. Uh, today we're going to take a look at the um, another one of the Elite Team Partnership uh, videos from Multi Village, and this is the new one they put up. This is the Labor Day Final, the 2011 Labor Day Final Revolver versus Chain. Now, based on some of Chain's other game results at this tournament, I don't think this is a real representative game from Chain. They don't play very well, so I'm not I'm not going to dwell a lot on Chain and hopefully we'll get a chance to look at a better game from Chain. In fact, in pool play they, they beat Revolver. So uh, hopefully then we'll get a chance to go back and really learn a few things from Chain. And um, what we're going to, what I'm really going to focus on here is this is really a clinic from Revolver and, and there's some really great opportunities uh, to learn, you know, just about at any level you're on as, as a player. So uh, the stats first. Revolver throws 91 passes and has 5 turnovers, about 95%. Chain throws 81 passes with 12 turnovers, about 85%. Um, one of these turnovers is forced by the, by the D, it's a point block. Uh, I think about 3 out of these 12, if I remember right, are forced by the D. Uh, and, you know, so once again you're seeing the uh, Ds are mostly all, or the turns are almost all enforced. But compared to what we saw from Revolver, prior examples from Revolver, you're seeing their turn numbers going way down, and they score 15 goals and 91 passes, so they're getting very, very efficient. So Revolver is starting to look very good. After Chain turns, Revolver uh, scores 5 out of 7 when they have to go nearly full field, uh, and 5 out of 5 when they have a short field. Chain, on the other hand, after Revolver turns, uh, scores one out of two when they have a long field, and only one out of three when they have, you know, sort of a medium and short field. So it's not, uh, not again, I don't want to dwell on Chain too much, but it's not a good job by Chain. They get three gifts from, from Revolver and only convert one of them, whereas Revolver gets five gifts from Chain and converts all of them. So what we're seeing is Revolver starting to play very well. Uh, the next thing I actually want to focus on is some real specific examples of where Revolver's playing very well, and then we'll uh, take a look at some of the long throws, and um, I want to point out two really great instructive hucks in the game, too. Alright, so let's get to that. Okay, one of the great things about watching Revolver play is how easy they make, they make everything look on O when they're playing well. So, Here's five examples of just great O from Revolver. So the, the very first point from the start of the film, they're just beautiful spacing by them. Uh, and then a longer point, I think this is the, maybe the fourth point of the game, longer point a little later, I think 15 throws or so to score, just great patience. Then a few points later, just beautiful patience and spacing. 822 to 914, gorgeous spacing, 1401 to 1446, more just beautiful spacing. Their offense, when it is working well, it just, just looks effortless. And I think maybe with one exception, maybe one throw in these five points, anyone watching this can make any of the throws that you see in this. These are just easy throws out to space. Even the long throws are easy throws out to space, with, I think with one exception. Um, so. I think any of these five points are great points to study and try to ask yourself, how do we get our team, you know, if you're a new player or a young college team, how do we get our team playing like this? Because no one's doing anything all that complicated. People are staying out of the way. They get nice, isolated matchups, nice, easy throws out to space. It's just beautiful examples. There's only two times in this, in the whole game, where you can really be critical of Revolver's uh, uh, O. One is a uh, possession after a uh, after a chain turnover, starting around 10:52. Uh, here, Revolver just loses their focus for a little bit. First, there's a there's a pretty bad huck that goes up, probably 10 seconds into this point. But then is is the the, the great lesson to learn. After the incomplete huck, the Revolver guy who's now on defense walks back up to the line and waits for the chain guy to come to the line to throw to the disc. But you don't have to do that. And the chain player instead picks up the disc in the end zone, unmarked, and starts their O. And I think chain scores in four passes. So terrible mistake by, by Revolver there, too. One, a bad hook, and two, very, very lazy defense. And they get punished immediately. 
even with Chain not playing so well this game. And the other time where, where Revolver is actually not looking all that good is at 17-15. They throw six or seven passes uh, right back and forth on their goal line, and it leads to a leads to a bad turn, which I think Chain takes advantage of. But you know, the the good play from Revolver in this game far out outweighs the bad play. But if I'm Revolver, I want to take a look at look at these points and ask ourselves what we're doing. And if I'm looking to learn from this game, I kind of want to take a look at some of these points really carefully because, you know, that's how you want to play. Okay, let's take a closer look at some of the long throws. Okay, over the course of, the, of watching this game, you'll see Revolver put up 10 long throws. You know, not all of them are hucks, but they're, you know, sort of 30, 40 yard, at least, throws downfield. Of those 10 throws, which you can see the times where they occur here. There's three ones that look to me to be pretty bad decisions. At 10, 10 01, 11 10 01 is actually complete, even though it's a bad decision. 10, 11 01 and 1154 are bad hucks and, and are turns. So the contrast between the seven really nice hucks and the three bad hucks are, uh, is actually a very instructive con contrast. Oh, sorry, there's one other one. At 321, I'm not in love with this throw here, but it, you know, it's it's not terrible or anything like that. The the six are great, and uh, one's sort of okay, and then three are bad. But the contrast, when when Revolver is playing well with these really nice long throws, these are just easy throws out to space to out in front of somebody who's who's wide open. The bad bad ones are forced throws where the receiver is covered and they become very difficult. And, and two out of the three of those are are turns. So Revolver's, as I said at the beginning, Revolver's putting on a clinic here. This is wonderful play. And contrast this, if you go back to, um, I think it was the Seattle or, or the Sockeye Ironside game from ECC, where, you know, both teams were comp completing like one out of three hucks or something like that. Revolver is showing you how it's done here. And these are really, really great examples. And there's two hucks in particular, one from Revolver here at 732 and another one from Chain right after that that I, that I want to show and I need to show some throwing dynamics which I've never done before so hopefully this doesn't look ridiculous on the film and this will be the last thing I want to talk about. Okay, so the last thing I want to focus on here and I've, I've never tried to do this before so I hope this works out. Uh, there's two great examples of, of long forehand hucks uh, one at 732 from a, a revolver player named Ashlyn Joy, I think, and one at 811 from a chain player named Dylan Tom. And they're both very great throwers, so it's uh, great to learn from them, and it just is real nice that the camera captures these two throws. They're both long forehand hucks. The first one at 732, you'll see the, the player release the disc sort of here and then bring his arm back. So the motion is kind of like this, although obviously he's releasing the disc. And the second one from, from Dylan Tunnel at 8.11, his arm just sort, of, sort of goes down and stops, and the disc, the disc uh, goes full field. What you see a lot from beginning players, and this, this is mostly for beginning players to work on throwing mechanics, when they're throwing in practice with no mark, is you'll see them release their arm all the way across their body, just like this, when they're throwing hucks. And what happens then is when you have a mark on you in a game, Obviously, you can't do that motion, so they have no confidence throwing long. So when you're throwing in practice without a mark, you have to make sure your arm doesn't release across your body on your long forehands. And you can do that by either bringing your arm back, that's what I actually like to do when I, when I threw, or you can just have your arm stop like Dylan does. Dylan's on the, Dylan's on the national team, Ashlyn is a great, uh, great handler for revolver. So either one you want to copy, bringing your arm back or just having it sort of stop, is fine, but if your arm's releasing across your body on your your uh, warm up warm up forehand hucks when you're practicing, that's not going to be able. That's not a throw you can use in a game. So this is two great examples. They happen to be captured very nicely on the camera, and I thought I'd po point those out for younger players because that's a great great thing to copy. So uh, thanks for watching, and thanks to Alti Village, Discraft, and Patagonia for this and hopefully this last little demonstration wasn't too silly on camera. Looking forward to the next uh, video from Multivillage.